Welcome back, boys, to another episode of Low Spec Labs. On today's episode, we are talking about Cloudflare tunnels. So in our last couple of videos, we talked about setting up Caddy server as a reverse proxy, configuring your firewall rules on your Hetzner server, setting up your PFSense host, and creating virtual bridges so you can separate your host traffic from your guest traffic. Using Cloudflare tunnels, we don't have to do any of that. It's actually really simple. It's a really simple deployment model. Basically, you spin up a server, you install Cloudflare D on that server, and then you configure Cloudflare and Cloudflare D to point to your internal resources. And then magically, Cloudflare does some stuff in the background and your, how your site is hosted. So basically, the Cloudflare D acts as a reverse proxy agent. And because it's sitting on your LAN, all it needs is internet access to serve your sites. So there's no need for you to have your firewall open. There's no need for you to configure your PFSense host other than, you know, separating guest and host traffic. There's no need to spin up Caddy server. If you're using Cloudflare, spinning up a server and service is rather simple. They're doing everything they can to get you locked into their ecosystem. And then once you're in, you're never getting out. But us signing away our free wills to our corporate overlord is not what we're here to talk about. Instead, we're talking about the pros of doing that. So let's look at some of the pros of signing in to the Cloudflare ecosystem. The first is no need to open ports or set up a reverse proxy. Things just work. You don't care how though. Simple install and configuration. So basically you install Cloudflare D on your local network, on a server, and then it acts as a reverse proxy and reaches out to Cloudflare and serves your sites out. If you're using Cloudflare Tunnel, you get easy SSL cert validation through Cloudflare. You get MFA through Cloudflare or some OAuth options. So you can use stuff like Google or Facebook authentication, which is useful in some cases. You get simple site deployments. So you only need to use, again, the Cloudflare D agent and configure that and then configure Cloudflare on the other side and you're ready to go. So you can spin up a site in about 10 to 15 minutes and have it all and have it have all the modern security and authentication features in no time at all now if you're starting out as a small business that's very useful as you scale up though you'll quickly find that you have to start paying cloudflare and that's where they get you once they start extracting money from you it's a wrap so i've talked about the pros what are the cons remember there are always cons to things in life an upside and a downside. The very first con is that it exposes your entire network to Cloudflare D. Basically, Cloudflare Tunnel works as a VPN onto your network. If improperly configured, a hacker can gain access to your network and then have basically full access to all your networks and services to run whatever attacks they want to. And this is something that has, in fact, been occurring. This isn't just Mr. Low Specs paranoid conspiracy theories even though he loves those. For instance, there's this Hacker News article from August 2023 where there have been known instances of hackers abusing Cloudflare Tunnel to gain remote access to private networks and exfiltrating data. Remember, boys, the cloud is just someone else's computer. And in this case, you're using Cloudflare's computers to create a virtual tunnel between you and the internet. What that means is anyone that can gain access to that virtual tunnel gains access to all your private stuff. We should perhaps take a quick look through the article itself. So let's see what this says. Cloudflare D is similar to Grengrok. Cloudflare D is a first Grengrok. Go for free. Do, 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 do. It's a command line tool. Connection to an origin server for a threat actor with elevated access and the feature is not supposed to do. Ah, okay. So in this particular web article, they're talking about attackers using Cloudflare D to create private tunnels into your network. So in this case, maybe you download a compromised Python repository or Python dependency. And as part of the compromised Python dependency, it's going to install Cloudflare D and allow remote attackers to access Cloudflare Tunnel. So it doesn't seem like there's any attacks where people compromise Cloudflare D and use that to remote into your network. It seems more like people are using Cloudflare D to exfiltrate data rather than infiltrate interesting use case and we are back we have our proxmox host spun up here let's see here let's create a new vm all right let's create a new container we'll call this cloud flare d 
and of course this is a container so I'll start it at 225 give it a password password standard Debian 32 gigabytes four cores 2048 Eight zero virtual grid zero. Set this to guest land. Static is ten o twenty thirty. Mm -hmm. Let's call this fifty six ten o twenty one. DNS on and of course let's point at the Cloudflare. Let's wait for this host to start up. We can start it up. Come on. Cool. So we now have that node spun up. All right. So we have that container spun up. Let's go ahead and let's get started. The very first thing we want to do is make a directory to store our key ring. So let's swap on over. All right. So here's what we do. We run a make dir dot p mode 0755 user share key rings and this gives us the following permissions on the user share key rings folder it gives us read write read read so from there we're next going to curl the cloudflare gpg key so the cloudflare signing key for us to verify we have the correct repo and it's going to place that in this user share key rings folder for us so now that we've done that, <clears throat> so here's what we do. We run a make dir dot p. We are then going to go ahead and add the package repository for Cloudflare. In our case, we're using Debian Buster. We do echo signed keyrings. So this portion right here is pointing to the custom keyring we created earlier. And then it's pointing to the bookworm distro or like repository. We then add that. Then we're gonna app get oops, we're gonna app get update dash y. We run an app get update dash y, wait for it to finish, and then we can do an app get install dash y cloudflare d. Oh there we go. Ah helps if you spell cloudflare d right. With cloudflare d now successfully installed, we then proceed and log in. So I'm going to blur this out so you don't try to log into my Cloudflare tunnel after watching this video. You right click and copy that link and you open up a web browser. It's going to open up your Cloudflare login. You go ahead and you log into Cloudflare. Of course, you're going to need your Cloudflare 2FA prompt. It's waiting for login. So let's paste and go. So Cloudflare tunnel wishes to serve as an origin for one of your zones. In our case, we're going to use this for or lowspeclabs.org. So go ahead and right click and copy this link. Open a new tab and paste. It's going to open up the Cloudflare authorized tunnel page. Choose your site. In my case, I'm going to choose one of them. And we hit authorize. Now when we go back to Cloudflare tunnel, it's created a certification. That is step two. Next, we have to actually create the Cloudflare D tunnel. So in our case, we're going to do Cloudflare D tunnel create. I'm going to call this low spec tunnel. And it's created a new tunnel with a tunnel ID. We can verify the tunnel was created by doing Cloudflare D tunnel list. And as you can see, we list the tunnel right there. Another method to verify that the tunnel is active is to go ahead and go to Cloudflare. Go to your Cloudflare dashboard. Go to Zero Trust. Go to Access. And when you go to Tunnels, you'll notice we have a tunnel. But this tunnel is currently inactive because we haven't configured it yet. And that is the next step we are going to do. Configuring the Cloudflare tunnel. First, we cd to our dot Cloudflare D directory. Then, we create a config.yml. Okay, cool. So the first thing we do is define our URL. So we do URL HTTP. And in my case, I am pointing this to my internal note server. So that's 10.0.20.35.80.80. 80. 
because that's what I have my Trillium notes hosted on. Don't forget the forward slash. After you have the URL directive, you are then going to have to point it to your credentials file. So your credential file is in the Cloudflare D. Or in my case, you just copy and paste. It's at root.cloudflareD, and then it gives you the tunnel ID. And in order for us to get our tunnel ID, we just go back to the Cloudflare site. We copy this URL. We go back here, and we paste. And of course, we make sure that's one line. And then last but not least, and last but not least, we point it to our tunnel. So to do that, we type in tunnel, and then again, we put in our tunnel ID that we copied earlier. No spaces in this config, and then we save. Next, we do a Cloudflare D tunnel route DNS. We use our tunnel name, and then we use the host name. So that would be doo -doo -doo -doo, Cloud Flare D tunnel route DNS low spec tunnel, and then we can do notes dot low spec labs dot org. Ah, okay. So because we already have that record created, we are unable to run that command. So here's how we resolve that issue. We go back to Cloudflare. We go back to domains. In our case, lowspeclabs.org. We go to DNS records. We find the record and we go ahead and we delete it. Now, when we go back and we run the command, it creates the command and it adds the route via the Cloudflare tunnel. Okay, cool. Now we have to actually activate the tunnel. So in order to do that, we do Cloudflare D tunnel run low spec tunnel. And you'll see all this stuff. And then of course we move that to the background and we go back to our site. And when we refresh the site, you'll see that the site now works. That's all handy dory. And with that, we are now serving websites. So that's a lot easier of a config to get websites hosted on the internet because we basically install one application, enter a couple lines into one file, start the service, and we are online. But there's additional benefits to Cloudflare, and that is MFA, or being able to put MFA in front of applications. I'd like this video to be less than about 15 minutes or so. I notice that tends to get more traffic, so we shall continue configuring Cloudflare D with MFA access in the next video. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to go over. As always, hope you boys have a great weekend.